So, you know, when people ask me where I'm from, I usually start with, uh, you know, I'm from around Pittsburgh. But that's not really true. I'm a, I grew up about an hour and a half from Pittsburgh. So I usually just like to start there and then try to narrow it down because I'm from the middle of absolute nowhere, okay? So, and then I'll say, you know, well, I'm from Bedford. And uh, some people will be like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a stop on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. So maybe you've driven by it before. I don't know why you would have ever gone there, but um, you know, I try Bedford to see if that works. But that's actually not really true either. I'm from a town called Osterberg. I just looked up the population data, and currently there are uh, 1,400 people who live there. <laughs> it's, it's not very big. I was actually surprised there were that many people. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Uh, you know, where I'm from, the area is all kinds of these small towns that usually end in Berg, okay? There's uh, Wolfsburg, Rainsburg, Shellsburg, and then there's this place called Claysburg. Claysburg. Claysburg is like the place where the sun doesn't shine in The Lion King. You know, when Mufasa's like, you must never go there, Simba. <laughs> That's Claysburg. <laughs> it's disgusting, okay? Uh, the only thing good about Claysburg is there's this pizza place there called Claysburg Pizza. It's, it's, it's pretty good, but, you know, it's funny. Years ago, they put in this drive-through. Yeah, there's a drive-through at a pizza place. I'm like, why they put it in? I think it's because all the non Claysburg pizza uh, people didn't even want to get out of their car anymore and step foot in that nasty place. You can just drive through and get your pizza and get out of there. You know, it's it's disgusting. Uh, I know we live to reach all people with nothing but Jesus, <laughs> not Claysburg. Okay, uh, I totally um, get why Jonah refused to go to Nineveh and ran away. I mean, if God called me to Claysburg, I'd be like, no way, I'm turning my boat as far as I can away from there. And if you're worried about people um, from Claysburg watching this message, it ain't gonna happen. They don't even have the internet yet, probably. I mean, who cares? Uh, yuck. I mean, uh, maybe, you know, and it's not just me. Everyone is like, ooh, Claysburg, you know what I mean? I'm just kidding. We do love all people, kind of, in a, in a way. Uh, but, you know, maybe you know a place like that, you know, uh, like the entire state of New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That's a lot of people on like Claysburg, so I probably did offend somebody now. Uh, but anyway, you, you might know a place like this. Uh, it's a place looked down upon, a place mostly passed over, despite despised and avoided. Well, today's message, it, it centers in, in around a place called Nazareth. And you probably heard the, the town before, Nazareth. Nazareth was a small city. Um, back when Jesus um, lived, it, there were only about um, five, lived on earth, I should say. Um, there were only about 500 people that called Nazareth home. And Nazareth was in the region of Galilee. And the entire region of Galilee was uh, not exactly an esteemed place, okay? John 7, 52, it says, they replied, are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Galilee. And the Jews really looked down upon this region called Galilee. They were like the uneducated people. They were, you know, a bit rough around the edges. But Nazareth was even worse. I mean, Nazareth was in Galilee, and even the people who lived in Galilee avoided Nazareth. I mean, it was like the worst. Stories that involved Nazareth wouldn't have been good stories. That's the point. And today's story is no exception. It's, it's not a good story, okay? It's not a good story. But that doesn't mean that we can't find good in the story. So go ahead and turn your Bibles to Mark chapter six. This is part 11 of our series called The Start of Something New from the Gospel of Mark. Part 11, can you believe it? We've gone at this a long time. And the title of the message today is called Good from Nazareth. Good from Nazareth. Mark six, one to six, we'll read the whole story. It says he 
went away from there and came to his hometown, which was Nazareth. And his disciples followed him, and on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went about among the villages teaching. Now, before we dig into some of the details, it's important to know that this is actually the second time that Jesus was rejected in Nazareth, in his hometown. The Gospel of Mark, what we just read, it only records the second rejection. And the Gospel of Luke, it only records the first rejection. But the Gospel of Matthew makes mention of both of these rejections. In Matthew 4, look, it says, Now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And it says, Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea. This is what is, uh, Matthew is talking about the first time Jesus was rejected at Nazareth. And Luke kind of fills in the details about what happened when he leaves the first time in Luke chapter four. I preached on this um, a few years ago, but this is how it ends, the first rejection, Luke four. When they had heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff. That's what happens when you go to Claysburg. <laughs> but passing through, or New Jersey. <laughs> They'll just drive you off the cliff in New Jersey. It's crazy. <laughs> Somebody from New Jersey. Oh, yeah, you're from New Jersey. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> passing through their midst, he went away. Okay. So that's what happens the first time Jesus goes to Nazareth. The people drive. They want to throw him off a cliff. But he just passed through their way. So after this first rejection, we've talked about a few in the past couple weeks. Jesus goes on to perform many miracles. The man with the demon calming the storm, Jairus' daughter, the woman with blood. But then he does the unthinkable. He goes back to Nazareth. What? To the same people who threw him off a cliff. Wanted to. I mean, you know, I think maybe, maybe they receive him differently this time. You know, surely things will be different this time. I mean, he just did all of these miracles. Surely, surely the people would want to come, would, would come around to knowing Jesus. After, you know, hearing about the things he t taught, the followers he had, the miracles he performed, surely it would be different this time. But no, it's just more of the same. Look at what they say, Mark 6 it says, how are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. So they said, is not this the carpenter? And that's their way of saying this guy is nothing special. He's, he's not impressive. He can't be anything out of the ordinary. We know him. He's just a regular guy. And then they call him the son of Mary. Now, in Jesus' days, the, the sons were always identified by their father. Okay? Even, even if the father would die, Joseph could have been dead at this time. We're not certain, but he could have been. Um, even, even if they died, they would still be identified by their father. So the reality of this statement was that I mean, start, sorry for the language, but it's just the reality. These people, they were calling Jesus' mother Mary a whore. I mean, they were calling Jesus an illegitimate offspring. That's what they were saying here. They weren't just being nice. This was a, this was a big stab, okay? If you remember we'll, where you know, Christmas season is upon us, it says, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. 
And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. That's because of the shame that was gonna be brought on to this couple. Couples who had illegitimate offspring were, were just shamed. And so, of course, we believe that Jesus was miraculously conceived. We believe in the virgin birth, but think about it. These people knew Mary. They knew Joseph. They knew Jesus ever since he was a little boy, right? So they hit Jesus where it hurt. If anyone knows who you are, they said, we do. We know who you are. You're nothing special. You're just one of us. You're a nobody, and you were a bastard child to top it all off. That's what these people are saying. I want you to understand the weight of what they were saying here. That's what these people were saying. Even though they heard all about the miracles and heard his teaching, they can't get past their own familiarity of Jesus. There's a saying that's often used in relation to this passage. It says, familiarity breeds contempt. Apparently, it's in a Taylor Swift song. I didn't even know this until the other day. I sent my letter. People are like, well, you like Taylor Swift now? I'm like, no, okay. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, these people, they couldn't accept that one of their own, one of themselves was now claiming to be above them. They couldn't stand it. They knew Jesus. They knew his mom. They knew his dad. But now this Jesus that they knew, this little boy that they actually saw growing up, now he's performing miracles. He's teaching things no one has ever taught. He's exhibiting this incredible wisdom. He's claiming authority over them. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? Familiarity bred contempt in these people. And familiarity even bred contempt amongst Jesus' own family, too. Earlier in Mark, it says this, and he went home and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, he is out of his mind. Jesus was rejected by his family, his own family. He was rejected by those closest to him, the very people who he loved and who had been loved by as a child. They were the ones who rejected him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor. That's why he says this. A, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. I, uh, I said at the beginning that stories that involved Nazareth weren't good stories. They're not good stories. And today's story is no exception. <laughs> this isn't a good story. This isn't a feel-good story. It's filled with rejection. This Nazareth story ends with Jesus. He's hurt. He's rejected, he's betrayed, and painfully disappointed by those closest to him. Remember, he was God, yes, he was God, fully God, but he was also fully man. He was fully a human being. Jesus felt this rejection. He felt it all. Stories that involved Nazareth wouldn't have been good ones, and this story, this story here, it's no exception. This wasn't a good story. There's not much to celebrate here. In John chapter one, the disciple Nathaniel had something to say about Nazareth. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said to him, he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of that place? Amongst those people, you know, we all have our own Nazareth stories, I think. Stories of hurt and stories of rejection, stories of betrayal, stories of painful disappointment. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of these stories of hurt and rejection and, and betrayal and painful Painful disappointment. Can anything good 
come out of Nazareth. Back in uh, 2021, about two years ago, I went through my own Nazareth story. As you may know, around that time, our, our church faced some difficult realities with where we were as a church. And I was the uh, associate pastor at the time, and there was, there was a lot of uncertainty. I wasn't sure if this was the place where my family and I were going to end up being. At, uh, at one point, I even offered my resignation because of where we were. I wasn't even sure that I could continue here, that it was even possible. But after our then lead pastor resigned, I became the interim lead pastor. And we, know, we knew the road ahead, it, it wasn't gonna be easy, but uh, Gwen and I made the decision that clearly this was the place where God was calling us to be. And uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, a, this is a real sermon today, okay? <laughs> uh, what we didn't know, however, was just how difficult that that season in our lives would be. It was our Nazareth story. For several months, we heard about all the rumors circulating. You know, I'm a real person too. <laughs> I hear it. We heard about all the rumors circulating about what happened at Reach being passed around the community and amongst people that we knew, that we knew that weren't true. We heard about our character and our integrity, my character, my integrity being attacked. We heard all the doomsday or predictions that the church was never gonna survive, never gonna make it. Collapse was imminent. We heard about people calling people from this church soliciting them to leave to go other places. Why, why would you stay at reach? People who we knew for years, who we shared some of life's greatest joys and pains with, who suddenly left, we didn't hear from them again. People who said they would always stand by us were some of the first to leave. People who said that the words and the way I preached changed their lives, now said I wasn't qualified to lead a church. I had to watch my wife be thrown to the side by people after years of giving nothing but love and joy and wonderful memories to. Sacrificial time to so many people is just gone. I answer questions from my confused children, my Millie who was held by a baby by many of these people and now they were gone. She asked what happened with so-and-so, why haven't we seen so-and-so? I had to answer those questions. Honestly, church, it was so bad that some days I couldn't even get out of bed. I'll just be honest. And I share this with you not because I harbor resentment or anything toward any of, any of these people. I don't. People are people. I share it because I'm a real person. I wish I could tell you that this kind of stuff doesn't hurt, but it does. Because I'm a real person. Don't skip past the verses today. Jesus, he was a real person. When he was rejected, he was a real person. He was without sin, of course. And uh, I wasn't, okay? And neither are you in these situations. <laughs> he was without sin, but he was a real person. During his time on earth, he felt things, he wept. He was hurt by the people closest to him. He was rejected by them. He was betrayed by them. He was painfully disappointed in them. We all have our own Nazareth stories, don't we? Amen. Stories of hurt, rejection, betrayal, painful disappointments. I know I do. I just told you some of mine. You do. I do. We all have them. Can anything good Come out of Nazareth. Nazareth stories aren't good stories. The story from Mark chapter six here is not a good story. Your Nazareth story, whatever it is, isn't a good story. My Nazareth story isn't a good story, but that doesn't mean there's not good in the story. 
Did you see the good in this story? You might have skimmed past it, but it's there. And he could do no mighty work there, except, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Except that. No one will point to the story about Jesus being rejected at Nazareth as a good story. Nazareth stories, they're not good stories at all. But that doesn't mean there's not good in the story. You just got to find it. I told you about the hard time my family and I went through in 2021. I don't point to that story as a good story. I wouldn't want to return to it. It wasn't a good time and it wasn't a good story but that doesn't mean there wasn't good in that story. The accept that's. You just gotta look for the accept that's. Accept that. He laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. See, even in the midst of all the hurt, rejection, betrayal, painful disappointments, there were still those accept that's. There was still good in my Nazareth story. I just had to find it. And I just had to see it. Yes, there were rumors. Yeah, my character and integrity were attacked. Except that there was always the truth. And the truth set me free. Oh yeah, a lot of people doomsdayed the imminent collapse of Reach Church. said we would never make it, except that every Sunday we did make it. (laughs) The gospel was preached, God was glorified. God filled all of the empty spots. It was like experiencing a real life miracle every single week. God was faithful. Yeah, people tried to get people to leave here. Yeah, people we knew and loved said they would support us no matter what. They left, except that a lot of people stayed. A lot of people stayed. People who we loved deeply stayed. Yeah, people left and it was hard, except that some other people came back. (laughs) And new people kept coming. Yet people said I wasn't qualified to lead a church, but other people made sure to come in and affirm my calling as a pastor. Yeah, my family was hurt. We were hurt by some people, except that my family was blown away, humbled, and forever grateful for the never blinking support, encouragement, love, and steadfastness that we received from other people. Nazareth stories aren't good stories, but that doesn't mean there's not good in the story. You just have to find it. You just have to look for it. You just got to see it. So can anything good come from Nazareth? You should know the story by, you should know the answer. You bet it can. (laughs) And we know that for those who love God, All things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. They work together for good. Jesus was rejected by his family and by those closest to him, the very people who he loved and had been loved by as a child. He felt the same rejection and hurt and betrayal and disappointment that we feel. Can anything good Come out of Nazareth, he was beaten, he was tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence. Justice miscarried and he was let off and did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare, beaten bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked, threw him in a grave with rich men, even though he'd never heard a soul or said, One word that wasn't true, still it's what God had in mind all along to crush him with pain. The plan that was that he gave himself as an offering for sin so that he'd see life come from it. Life, life, and more life. 
and God's plan will deeply prosper through him. Out of that terrible travail of soul, he'd see that it's worth it and be glad he did it. Through what he experienced, my righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous ones as he himself carries the burden of their sins. Therefore, I'll reward him extravagantly. The best of everything, the highest honors, because he looked death in the face and he didn't flinch. Because he embraced the company of the lowest. He took on his own shoulders the sin of many. He took up the cause of all the black sheep. See, Jesus, he entered into our hurt. He wasn't far off. He actually entered into it. He experienced hurt from us. He entered into our hurt. He entered into our rejection. He entered into our betrayal. He was beaten. He was tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered, like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence. He, who knew no sin, he entered into our sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was rejected in Nazareth. He was rejected by his family and by those closest to him, the very same people who he loved and had been loved by as a child. He was rejected by the very people who he came to save. And yet look at how Jesus identifies himself. Later in the book of Acts, to Paul, look at how he identifies himself. As I, Saul, Paul, was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Jesus is of Nazareth. He's from Nazareth. He knows your hurt. He knows your pain. He knows betrayal. He knows painful disappointment. For we do not have a high priest who's unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations, but one who has been tempted knowing exactly how it feels to be human. I love that amplified version. Who knows exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. Therefore, let us with privilege, it's a privilege, to approach his throne of grace. That is the throne of God's gracious favor with confidence and without fear so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in time of need, an appropriate blessing <laughs> coming just at the right moment. I can't tell you how many blessings I received at just the right moment through my own Nazareth story. And I know it's the same for you too, because we have a good father. Good father. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus is of Nazareth. Of course it can. You bet it can. See, God has a way of taking our greatest hurts and our worst rejections, our biggest betrayals, our most painful disappointments and turning them for good. Nazareth stories aren't good, but God has a way of taking what the enemy meant for not evil, for, for not good, and turning it Amen. for good. Can anything good come from Nazareth? <laughs> My own Nazareth story, I, I see the good that has come out of it with every face in this gym right now. I, I see it, I see it with every new face that walks through our doors. I see it in the construction trucks outside. Every day, new paint, new floors, new whatever, I see it in it. 
all the time, every brush of paint, every piece of floor, every brick being sawed. I see it in my girls wearing their upward sports cheerleading uniforms, <laughs> laughing in our backfield with their friends, playing on the playground. I hear it when my Millie comes home from her lesson at Kyretta Studios, playing This Is Amazing Grace and singing it for all of us to hear. Her timing still needs some work, but I hear it. I see it in the strength and recovery bonfire in our backfield. People feel welcome. I see it in all the unexpected blessings that I wasn't even counting on. A car full of pastors from Africa the other day, no joke. They pulled, five of them, they pulled up to the building and said, we saw your sign and I just had to come in. We just had to come in and meet the pastor. Are you the pastor? We want you to come to Africa. Like, I've been, I mean, I'll come back, you know, whatever, all right. But uh, they prayed with us. His brothers from around the world just, what? Unexpected blessings. I see it in being able to lead people to Jesus for the first time. That actually happened this past week. Unbelievable. I see it in conversations of healing, in conversations filled with strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. I see it in my wife, her flourishing, teaching Bible studies, preparing her message for the jingle mingle, fulfilling her own calling that God has for her life right here. And this past week, most beautiful picture, I'll never forget. I saw it, my son walking around the other side of the building, taking some of his first steps in that new place. Can anything good come from Nazareth? You bet it can. You bet it can. Nazareth stories aren't good at all, but God has a way of taking what the enemy meant for evil and turning it for good. Back in the uh, Old Testament, there was a guy named Joseph who had his own Nazareth story. Maybe you've heard of him, a story with hurt and rejection, betrayal, painful disappointments, thrown into a pit by his own brothers, left for dead, sold into slavery. Later he was wrongfully accused he was thrown into prison. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? This is what Joseph said. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So church, Maybe you're in the middle of your own Nazareth story right now. And I wanna tell you, can anything good come from Nazareth? Oh, you bet it can. There's already good in your story. You just gotta find it. It's there. God's grace is so good toward you. Can anything good come from Nazareth? You bet it can. As we serve a God who takes what the enemy meant for evil and turns it for our good. Can you see a victory today? I see it for you. Take it from a guy who has his own Nazareth story, we all do. Our God can take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for Father, we praise you that you're a good God. We praise you for being with us, even in the trial, even in those moments of hurt and pain and rejection. God, you are there because you felt it too. 
And so God, we put our hope and we put our trust in you and we know that we can find you even when we don't see you, you're working, you're there and you're turning things around on our behalf. Why? Because you're a good God and you have a plan for all things. And we rejoice in you. We praise you for who you are today. In Jesus' name, amen. So can anything good come from Nazareth? Hey, you bet it can.